my name is Hero Job Shibe, and this is Musings of a Shy Podcast, a Dogecoin peer to peer sharing economy show. And you are listening to episode 22. Girl, did you hear what? On this episode, I'm going to be talking about Confire, Gawmire, and what has happened to the Confire blog site and just the history of it as it has bubbled up once again in the news. But before we get into that, the news. <laughs> The news. Uber um, had a bit of a victory in the city of Portsmouth. What had happened was uh, the regulators there voted to eliminate taxi regulation. Uh, the taxi drivers threatened to sue the city uh, because they feel that Uber did not you know, comply with the regulations. It was unfair business practices, basically. And so what the Portsmouth did, the, the taxi commission itself did was they got rid of the regulations. They basically said they recognized the so-called ride-sharing surface offered by the platform to including Uber. They replaced the current taxi medallion system with a registration process that require all drivers to register with the city's clerk's office and provide proof of commercial insurance. Uh, they require the police department to conduct criminal background checks on all registered drivers who will be charged a fee for the background checks, uh, requiring all drivers for hire to sign and adhere to the code of conduct. So therefore, they just basically dissolved the taxi commis- commission. Uh, the taxi commissioner, Larry Cadell, proposed that that was the case, that there was no need for a taxi commission. Of course, this has to be approved by the city body and the mayor, but within the city of Portsmouth, this is what has happened. So basically, Uber is capable of operating with in the city limits of Portsmouth, but also uh, the taxi system in itself has changed, which will allow them to operate in the manner similar to that of Uber, and they don't have to worry about the undue burden that the government in that city has put in place for the taxi commission. So that is just something that's very interesting and worthy to note that a peer-to-peer system may, in fact, have to just uh, dissolved a government body. In other news, two different things, and this comes out from Dogecoin shop, Redditor. They What they have done is, in the city of Las Vegas, working with Snapcard.io, which is a payment service provider for cryptocurrencies, is that within the next 60 days, they'll be rolling out 185 stores that will be accepting Dogecoin, Litecoin, and Bitcoin within the city of Las Vegas in the 18B Arts District. Uh, if you're unfamiliar in Las Vegas, just like in any major city, there's a downtown area. And this is the downtown area that ho- holds uh, our districts. And every Friday within that city, they have what is called First Friday, where there's a lot of arts, activities, um, music, concerts, things of that nature take place within the downtown area to encourage local business usage, bring in tourism, and just have a good good time in that area. And what they plan on doing around the same time that this uh, rollout is going to occur is that beginning in the March of 2015 on the first Friday, they're doing what is called a crypto crawl, crawl in Las Vegas. And what the crypto crawl in Las Vegas is going to do is basically for every dollar that you spend on that day within these businesses using cryptocurrencies, in particular Dogecoin, is going to be matched by those businesses. Is a way to not only promote, they're going to, actually what they're doing, they're asking for Doge to be put on a wall at, at, at a particular site, each of the dollar. And that way the local stores will match these wallets so new crypto cruisers can use their first wallet and purchase something. So basically it's a way of interacting and encouraging uh new people to come down and shop with uh, cryptocurrencies to find out what, all, what it's all about, to guide these people in this event and to spend cryptocurrency in this area. Uh, the event is going to take place March 6th. Uh, typically, a first Friday has anywhere from twenty to 30,000 guests. Um, there's about three, three, three to 4,000 stores in that area. There's a lot of people um, within that area. There will be some filming. Uh, there's going to be a lot of engagement. So this is a, an event that's going to be taking place. The announcement occurred about five days ago. And I'll keep you updated on it. But it's just just another avenue of informing people about Dogecoin, but also another place where you can actually spend your cryptocurrencies in the real world. And that's taking place in Las Vegas in the Art District in March 6th of this year. And that is it for the news. Uh, there will not be a term of the day. Uh, so we're just going to get right directly into the episode. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the Coinfire blog incident. Um, I have mentioned about... A few times about Coin Fire Blog is one of my go to uh, websites when it comes to stories about the cryptocurrency space and is a pretty damn good crypto uh, news site. And what had happened was that his domain for his website had been taken it taken from it. Uh, basically someone had obtained the credentials to the domain site and and as a result uh, Coinfire 
blog could no longer use their domain name. They had to switch over into a different site, which is now, uh, instead of being coinfire.cf, is now coinfire.io. And so I'm just going to break down the incident itself, but first we're just going to get in a little bit of the history of Coinfire Blog. Uh, Coinfire Blog was started in June 6th of 2014, and I'm reading the about page from the new website, which has been the same about page from pretty much the very beginning. Uh, it was created by Mike Johnson on June 6, 2014 as a place where dishonest statements, payola, and link, bla- link bait would not be tolerated. The team of contributors at CoinFire are investigating stories with a commitment to run stories that are verified by our team through various channels before running a story. Our editorial policy is clearly listed here on the site, but one key thing everyone should take away that sets us apart from many others is that we never, ever take compensation for articles. Some sites claim that they take money only for a review, that they don't guarantee positive or negative coverage. CoinFire is different. We just don't take money, positive or negative. That is our policy and that will always be our policy. We hope you will join our team as we continue to grow CoinFire. If you enjoy what we're doing, feel free to send a few bits our way. Uh, Signed, Mike Johnson. So Mike Johnson is the executive editor of this site. This site has, again, has only been around for a few months. And it has risen to be one of the premier sites when it comes to cryptocurrency news. For the simple fact that they just don't simply run a story. They verify information. They check the sources. They check what the story in and of itself is about. They may post maybe a little like rumor thing and then they just break down what's going on. And not even really a rumor thing. They just they just cover the rumor itself and then dispel the myths or what is going on about that particular story. Uh, they just they just verify everything. They have a journalist integrity and a number of different uh, cryptocurrency sites don't have that. There's been a number of issues from the, pretty much every single site that has existed about verifying information, verifying sources, just having a you might say a favorable review of certain sites and a, no negatives, negative review for certain sites. And just in general, it's, it's pretty much a site that doesn't, just like I stated, it's not going to be bought. You can't buy them for good news or bad news or for anything. They're just going to run with the story and go wherever it takes them. So because of their editorial policy and their stance and principle as a as a news site that's just not going to make things up, it's going to verify things, it's not just going to put whatever on a site for to encourage people coming onto the site for a simple driving advertisement or anything of that nature, it is obviously has made it a few enemies. And one of the first things that happened to the site was... And one of the first things that happened to the site was back in September 10th of 2014, a massive DOD, DOS attack occurred. And what this DOS, DOS attack did was it attacked a number of cryptocurrency-based uh, websites that were affiliated with the WordPress system. And it just slow down and crash sites and just pretty much disrupts these particular cryptocurrency sites. Uh, everything from Change Radio to Piece of Bit and FTL Radio. And as a result of these DOS attacks, a couple of these uh, cryptocurrency sites just did not come back online. They just did not have the manpower or the resources to combat a continuous or even a every once in a while DOS attack. They just couldn't do it. Uh, Coin Fire, on the other hand, just uh, simply migrated, moved on, and was able to uh, reinstate itself. But that was like the first kind of serious incident that occurred for uh, of attack against the site. Now, this site itself was not specifically targeted. It just seemed to be any cryptocurrency site that was had a WordPress specific, you know, WordPress specific, you know, site, and it cost them a bit of money. They had to pay out. They had to pay pay to their IP provider. It was, you know, uh, looking at the post from Let's Talk Bitcoin, it, you know, occurred over $1,200 in expenses to pay. This That's a lot of money. And then lawyers had to be brought out. And so that is even a cost in and of itself. But that's when the first kind of type of cyber attacks that occurred on the CoinFire site. 
the other type of attack was the and I've re- spoken about this before was it was hacked and as the site was hacked a message was left on the site uh, it was basically while there was no confirmation to who the perpetrator was it basically was a message indicating that if you are going to talk basically talk smack about God Myers we're going to come after you and so basically their their site was vandalized and I'll get into the whole God, God Myers thing in a little bit but that occurred October 28th of 2014 uh, this was a result just after uh, Coinfire had written a, a couple different I- articles about Gallmire and as a result they were attacked for the, their publication. Uh, the second time they were attacked was when a DMCA notice uh, w- was w- went against the site. Now it could be related to individuals who are affiliated with Gallmire or it could be a result of the story that they published on their site because the following day they had a DMCA notice. And what Coinfire did was they had published an article detailing the secretive SEC investigation that was being currently conducted on cryptocurrency currency uh, businesses. Uh, they had, what had happened was a series of SEC letters had gone off, off to a different number of different businesses stating that they needed to comply and hand over the records and all that information. Now there's been a number of different businesses that have been known to be bad actors that have recently have been taken down by the government, but this was just an overall blanket series of letters that were being sent out and Confire had written an article about it and posted a composite of the type of C- SEC letter that an individual or a series of businesses may have received from the government. And if you're unfamiliar with the SEC, the SEC is a Security Exchange Commission. They're responsible for the monetary and stocks and policies of the United States government. And recently, cryptocurrency has been brought in through FinCEN, which is the another financial arm and regulatory body with the United States government that they had to get money transmitted licenses. They had to basically register and comply within the already existing financial structure of the United States government. This is something that had these regulations have passed on earlier in the summer. But Confire basically wrote an article about Con- about this and the next day they got a DMCA notice, which is uh, the digital which stands for the Digital Millennium, Millennium Copyright Act. And basically what it is, is if you have a copyrighted material on your website and you have permission to publish it, uh, you receive this notice and you have to take it down. This happens a lot with videos and music files and movie files, particularly on YouTube or Google or any of those type of sites. You, you hear about this all the time. Uh, but Confire received such a notice and they had a, their website was shut down and then they had to once again rebuild and migrate and, and moved on because they were not they didn't feel they were being treated properly by their their IP provider and that incident occurred sometime right after uh, in the October range and then a few months later we now have their their no their the, now their domain name was stolen which was done January 22nd of 2014 and basically I'm going to read what uh, Mike Johnson has written in our Bitcoin about the incident I'm just going to read a little bit from it. So he says, hey everyone, Mike here from Confire. Yes, for real. He had, what had happened was that uh, they have active control of their Twitter account, Bitcoin talk account, and their Reddit account at the moment. What had happened also was their Twitter ta- account was also taken over, but they appeared to have retaken that back. Uh, what he basically wanted to state was that he wanted to address what happened that day, today, and let you know what we know, what we don't know, and what we are working on to get these restored. First, our domain was not expired, or expired nor was it originally even slated to expire today or any time near today. We have a valid registration until later this year. Second, our password was not compromised as best as we can tell at the time. We have secure passwords for every single platform. Each pa- password is different and we work diligently to make sure our security is very tight after the last incident involved in our site, which I'm, I'm sure he's referring to the, the hack, the graffiti hack. The third time, third, we are turning all our relevant information to law enforcement. While we don't know if anything will come of this, as last reported, it went cold quickly. We have at least taken the steps to do that. Now, this is not the first time that uh, Coinfire has gone to law enforcement. They did it for the graffiti incident when their website was hacked. They also did it for the DMCA incident where they feel that the, there wasn't a valid claim against their website. And they also have been receiving through Twitter and emails directed at Mike Johnson, but other people affiliated with the, the Confire site, death threats. They have actually received death threats. And they also handed all that over to law enforcement. But back into what he has written. Um, basically, he breaks down to what they feel may or may or not have happened uh, on how their uh, site was taken from them and they also admitted their false in particular with the, the Twitter hack uh, once the attackers had the domain
domain. They were able to update the MX information for the email. They didn't need to know the passwords for Twitter because they were able to easily change the password via email link. And that's what I believe what happened. We used to it FA on everything but our domain register and Twitter account. We didn't use it with our register because they don't offer 2FA. Uh, 2FA is, two, is a second uh, it's like a second offer uh, authentication process. It's basically like if you log on to whatever site then it will text you to your phone to make sure you're actually the person individual logging on and then you enter the code and then you can get into your account. Um, they didn't activate the one for Twitter. We should have enabled it and I take full responsibility for that. Basically they also said uh, that there was a leak regarding some contact information on Twitter for their SEC documents and, and I'll read from here. Regarding the leak of our contact information on Twitter for the SEC documents, the person who hacked our Twitter was completely wrong regarding the name. We won't confirm, confirm or deny the person who is regional office or any other information because we that would compromise our source. And the sad thing about this is Confire is that for finding sources who will trust us to bring you the inside information we have brought you in the past will now prove that much more difficult. While no source has been compromised and the hackers were unable to read our previous emails, we encrypt and, then we, and they don't have access to our own mail server, they have planted to see that no doubt will be damaging to the reputation of our site and our ability to keep sources and information secure. So basically what has happened is that uh, this is basically a means of shutting down Confire by besmirching their reputation. If they can't secure their site, if they can't secure their emails, no one's going to want to talk to them or give them any inside information as he stated or any or come over with a story or any type of information of a scandal because they, they don't want their names to be uh, taken. Another thing that has happened is, uh, and this is the last bit I'm going to read, we understand that many people went and registered Confire XYZ domains and some to help us get us back online and many to prevent us from coming back online. We will be evaluating our options in the near future. Uh, Confire is back online even though they're not at Confire.cf, they're not at Confire.io. They also are protected by Cloudflare account. That's how their information is protected, but that doesn't protect them from having their domain name taken from them. That is a result of some nefarious trickery that this has happened. And why this particular attack and a couple of last attacks have happened, particularly the death threats, is all a result of their investigation into Gaumeyer Minor. Now, I've spoken about Gaumeyer in the past, and Gaumeyer has even gone, you know, publicly gone and spoken out against Confire's article, stating that they, you know, their lies are superfluous and things of that nature. They also have sent legal documents stating that they're going to plan on suing Confire. There's a letter that um, <coughs> Confire uh, Confire released. It's on Scribble. It was a cease and desist from the lawyers, basically saying that on November 26, 2014, Confire published an article entitled Gaumeyer's Line About Partnerships, which contained grossly false and misleading information relating to Gaumeyer and exposing Confire potentially to significant civil liability. And what that particular article is about, and I've spoken about it before, was that Josh Grazer, the CEO of Gaumeyer, has stated that Paycoin, a coin that he had created uh, through his various affiliated companies, was going to be accepted as a payment and for payments and goods and services on Amazon, Walmart, and Target. What God Meyer, what Confire did was they went and tried to verify Josh Grazer's statements. They didn't take his statements for word value. They didn't take it his word for it. They went and talked to Car- Target. They talked to Amazon. They talked to Walmart. And it took them weeks and months for them to verify anything. And it, what it came back down to was that both Am- all of them, Amazon, Target, and Walmart, has stated to Confire that there is no such relationship relationship to Gaumeyer Meyer or Josh Grazer. But they had no plans at that time or in the near future to accept Paycoin as a payment for goods and services, which is important because before the launch of Paycoin, Josh Grazer was basically touting that this coin was going to be accepted and that's why you should invest into Paycoin and purchase Paycoin. Not only that, but he stated that the Paycoin price is going to be at $20 at USD for a single Paycoin, which is a lot, particularly for a launch of a new coin for it to already have that predetermined USD value, which is not the case. Uh, currently, Paycoin is at, currently right now, Paycoin on the exchanges that do list Paycoin on their site is trading around $2 a coin. It started around the, the $7 mark and has since plummeted. And it's just the beginning of a lot of kind of iffy things about Gaumeyer and Josh Grazer. A number of, like I explained before about Andrew V wanting to debate Josh Grazer. Um, and Josh Grazer is the one who issued the challenge and Andrew V had accepted 
posted it and review of the Litecoin Foundation. They have asked that Litecoin be taken off of the Josh Grazer owned exchange, uh, Dogecoin Foundation, and members of the Dogecoin community. Norcoin, a number of different all currencies have asked to be disassoci- disassociated and delisted from Josh Josh Grazer's business. And there's been issues with his mining site called Hashlets about people actually being paid, but the issues of it, the mining power that allegedly is occurring is not reflected in any study when it, in regards to mining pools and mining power and people monitoring that. They don't see it being reflected if all these people are mining. And so some people believe that it's just a big old pyramid scheme, scheme and, you know, Josh Grazer is just, you know, a scammer. And basically what it comes down to is that Confire did its due diligence. It, it went and spoke into, you know, Amazon, Walmart, and they went out and verified this information. It also recently came out that they had a source that told them that the SEC is investigating Josh Grazer, Josh Grazer and Gall Miner. And most importantly, that it was released that uh, Josh Grazer does not have a money transmitting license, that his business doesn't have that, which is something that a, a lot of uh, a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges and businesses are now required to have, and he doesn't have it. Again, all this is information that can be easily verified. You can go on to the financial website of FinCEN and you can find out whether or not a business has a money transmitter license. Uh, other news organizations could contact Walmart and all, on Amazon and Target and verify whether or not they have a relationship with Paycoin or Josh Grazer or God Miner or any of the, the various businesses they own, whether or not they have any type of affiliation. The thing of it is, is <coughs> Confire just simply did their due diligence, did their story. And if they are truly, you know, BSing or anything, then on God Miner right now, I would see the money licensing license. I would see their numbers. I would see their information. I would see, you know, some type of video or some type of statement from Amazon or Walmart or Target indicating that they're they're having some kind of relationship. We don't need any details or anything like that, but simply just communicating or relating in some kind of business. And so I'm just going to leave it there on that note. I just, it's, it's just, it's very frustrating to see a a site like this is bringing cryptocurrency news being targeted and primarily targeted by people who are for Paycoin and for Godminer. They just seem to be wanting to troll this site and take it down in, in any way that they can, whether it's through through uh, hacking the site and or taking the domain name or making death threats. Uh, it's just it's just sad to see this this is occurring. I'm just on the uh, as a person who's into cryptocurrencies and someone's part of this community. I think that is part of this community. Community and others should do the same thing that we should support CoinFire. Um, if CoinFire is telling the truth, then it needs to be supported. If it is lying, then it needs to be taken down like any other businesses. But right now, it doesn't seem to be the case. CoinFire has gone well above and beyond what it needs to do to verify his information. The onus is really on Josh Grazer and Gal Miner to demonstrate their truthfulness. It just really is. And this whole wait and see, well, maybe it might not be well, you know, it's only coming from Con. Con- on fire site, it's in these statements or anything like that is just not a, a good enough excuse. It's just all you have to do is just look for the money transmitter license and see whether or not uh, any of the Josh Grazer's companies have that, and that does not seem to be the case. More importantly, we as members of this community should demand that the other cryptocurrency sites follow up and verify Confire's information. If it's not the truth, then it's going to come out rather quickly. If it is truthful, then I should be seeing articles on every single. Bitcoin, Bitcoin currency site about Josh Grazer and about Confire. And I think what this whole incident is demonstrating is that there is a significant lacking of actual journalism within the cryptocurrency space. It seems to really only be coming from a couple of sites and one of them is Confire. While the other sites are just mer- merely just clickbait Bitcoin versions of Gawk, not Gawker, but BuzzFeed and just putting up these fluff pieces and they're not really interested in any type of journalism. They're just really just there to drive traffic for their advertisers. More importantly, if we as a community are truly building platforms and systems that are in the cryptocurrency space to counter the current existing legacy systems to, in essence, escape those legacy platforms because of their absolute failure to serve society or fit the needs of the global economy or the global society that we're currently living in, then we need to demand more from these current existing platforms, particularly in, in essence in the subject matter of our new sites.
kids because otherwise all we're doing is just playing a game of musical chairs. So that's it for this episode. I will keep you updated if there's any new developments, but it's just a pause of concern and it's just really sad to see that this is happening. My podcast show goes out to The Cool Story Show, in particular to Andy and Diamond Dave for having the epic Google Hangout fail with me. You can find The Cool Story Show on iTunes and Stitcher and you can go onto their website, thecoolstoryshow.com. Thank you for listening to my show. You can find me, Hero Job Shy, on the Twitter at Musings of a Shy. You can find me at Google Plus as Musings of a Shibe. You can also find me on Facebook as Hero Job Shibe or Musings of a Shibe. You can also click on the show notes and look into the links and click directly onto those links. You can find me on uh, my webpage with Musings of a Shibe at uh, wordpress.com, the subreddit Musings of a Shibe podcast. You can also email me directly as Musings of a Shibe at Outlook. You can find the show and listen to the show on iTunes, Mixcloud, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Radio Crypto Bucket, and SFXIO. You can also find Nerdist Podcast, me at Nerdist Podcast Coalition Group, a great podcast coalition on the Facebook. Thank you and have a great day to the moon.